I can't tell you where I met these people because I don't know myself. But I do know that the city where these hooded Irish vigilantes work is not, as you might expect, Belfast. It's Dublin. The group is called Tala Against Drug Dealers, TAD for short. Shrouded in paramilitary secrecy, they've never appeared on television before. For some reason, they decided to talk to the ABC to explain their decision to punish drug dealing with death. They never cured the problem. We can't cure the problem. The only problem, the only way to cure the problem of the drug dealing is to kill a dealer. That's the only way to stop a dealer selling. Operating from the outer Dublin suburb of Tala, Tad say that they've killed already. You have carried out actions which resulted in the death of drug dealers? That's correct, yeah. In Tala? Uh, not necessarily in Tala. They were Tala related. We don't only operate in Tala. The dealer selling in Tala from another area. We followed that person, no matter where. In the north side, anywhere, it doesn't matter. We'll go after him. As long as he sells in Tala, he's a tark of a tad. Neglect is a word that crops up again and again among people who know Ireland's drug history. On the surface, it's hard to understand in tourist friendly Dublin, where a staggering 7% growth has people calling Ireland Europe's new tiger economy. The problem is that big sections of the population have missed out on the bonanza. This is what it's like. Two decades ago, Bob Geldof, then a little-known Dublin punk, wrote a song about the area called Rat Trap. The trap is still there. After two decades of neglect, the St. Joseph's Flats are at the heart of the rat trap. There's no hope. There's no hope in this flat whatsoever. As I said, there's about 30, 38 tenants in this flat. And I'd say 30, out, out, out 38, you'd have 28 drug, drug dealers in the flats. Every second person in these flats are dealing in drugs. Go ahead. Uh, for our band to one. Sergeant John O'Driscoll runs the drug squad in the inner city. Drug dealing is still rampant. There would be a number of addicts living in these flats and uh, there have been reports of a number of people selling within the complex. Do you feel that you're making an impression on the problem in a place like this? Yes, well, what we have tried to do in the particular drug unit that I'm attached to is to get involved with the community and to build up contacts with them and as a result of that, uh, we have tried to address the problem as it is perceived from the community rather than uh, trying to judge it ourselves and maybe achieving successes which, which wouldn't really uh, have an imp a real impact on the problem on the ground. Sergeant O'Driscoll is a thoughtful and caring policeman, but he has a force of only 14 spread round the clock seven days a week to deal with what amounts to a drugs plague. Almost as if to emphasize the lack of resources, he drove us twice past a man he identified as the monk in the white shirt, a notorious gangland boss doing business openly on the street. It's close to anarchy. As Dublin's docklands died, so unemployment rose in the inner city. It's 80% in the worst affected areas now. You're looking at entire community, communities which effectively have been obliterated the, the young people of these communities, most of them are drug addicts. And if they're not drug, drug addicts, they know somebody who is. One solution was to move people out of the inner city to estates in Dublin's outskirts. Without jobs, the effect was just to relocate the drug problem. Out on the sprawling, impoverished estates like Tala, the people are getting angry. They're starting to take things into their own hands. Marches like this regularly pick at the houses of suspected drug dealers. They're 
influence is being felt. James, who said he'd given up dealing hash, came up to us to complain that he was still being victimised. My mum was on them hoots over there, really, and she was thrown off because we were selling hash. And we explained the situation already that there was no hash being sold on my house for seven weeks. So and you were a dealer, but you, you say you're not anymore. No, I'm not anymore. Yeah. And, and so what do you think of them? What do we think of them? Yeah. Well, I won't give me honest opinion. I won't give me your honest opinion. I think that they're being silly there. That they're, they're here to get heroin out the air and they're, they're here because I was selling hash seven weeks ago. This is an atmosphere that's ripe for vigilante action. All on this march claimed they'd not go beyond peaceful means in hounding dealers. Tommy Whelan's a serving soldier who lives on the estate. On this march here now, we're letting the people that are pushing drugs in the area know that they're not wanted in this area. That the people here living here don't want them in the midst. And the best thing for them to do is leave the area peacefully. It's a peaceful march and uh, we're just going to let them know that they're not wanted here. Also peaceful in its aims, Tommy's community patrol. It's effectively become a parallel police force for the estate. Uh, Roger, there's uh, some uh, bogeys gone in through Bravo there. Are you in that area? Over. Oh, we're down at M104. There's a couple of bogeys sitting down here on the wall, scratching his fence. So we're watching them at the moment. OK, we'll deal with the, the other situation ourselves. Over. You can what see by this, this is Poicep Town, OK? It's a heroin uh, substitute. Sure. They discover methadone in the backyard of a woman who's been repeatedly invaded by addicts. The woman agreed to talk as long as we didn't show her face. They just used it as though it was as though they owned the place. It was just simply a case of I didn't exist, and they just paraded it in and out there when they felt like it. As you see, it's full of rubbish, which isn't mine. I've tried cleaning it up a number of times and. It just keeps getting worse. It's clearly not enough to rely on the Irish police, the Gardaí. Another way of looking at it is if the Gardaí were being effective in the area, we wouldn't be needed here. We wouldn't be ne it wouldn't be necessary for us to be out on the streets. I would rather be with my family at this point. But uh, I think it's necessary for us to be here. Ireland's Gardaí are always keen to show off a haul of smuggled cannabis, but is it enough? I wanted to ask if they'd failed on the streets, if the killing of a top journalist indicated their failure to combat major crime, if vigilantes were taking over. All questions that get the same stone wall treatment from Dublin's top police detective. I don't accept that we have lost control. I don't accept that at all about people who are untouchable. I don't accept that it's out of control. I don't accept that at all. Down on the estates at the huts that local women run as part of their community anti-drug scheme, their patience with the authorities has run out. The governments, do you, what, what do they want to do? They, they want to sit back in their offices and pretend that everything's fine. Up until six months ago, we were told that Brookfield hadn't got a drug problem. Hadn't got... And the crimes that were related, the crime, crimes that were happening in this area were related to drugs. So how can sit back in their police station and say that there's not a drug problem just goes beyond me? We're trying to help ourselves. And by rights, the government should be doing that for us. And regards to the police, that we are doing their job for them. Whoever is out there that will see or hear this programme, please, girls and boys, don't even attempt it. Don't bring this pain and sorrow on yourselves and your families. That's it. Yeah. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. It'll be all right. <laughs> well, this is what happens. This is what you see now. This is one of so many. Greedy men bringing drugs into it. In a poverty stick stricken area and them sick, sick, they should be lined up and shot dead. Sick dead. That's it. Sick people. Push women and children have to march around at night, stand outside people's doors. That's the police job. Police should be going in. They should be taking people out of there. We know they're selling drugs. They know they're selling drugs. They turn the blind eye. We don't. Nature, they say, abhors a vacuum. The neglect of 20 years has left Dublin vulnerable, first to drugs and now to the men who fight them.